Aloha, big wave trading family. I hope you're enjoying your long weekend. I have a pretty long new positions commentary for the weekend. It basically just goes over the overall market. I suggest everyone read it just so you know how I feel up here, quote, quote, as the market continues just to hit new highs without a pullback. So in lieu of that, I don't want to waste any more time in the video going over the overall market since I didn't really talk about the new long positions there. So that's what we're going to do here. I only have two high quality long positions for Tuesday, and that should be a mini red flag that following the last two strong, powerful sessions, I've only come up with a few high quality long positions. That's indicative of a market that's very stretched. So there's a lot of stocks that are just too extended to even consider and anyone that are now is now bouncing off the low. Um, it seems like they probably are a little late to the party, but we'll we'll see. These are some pretty good setups, so we'll see how these two um, act. The uh, the new long positions from the day before: E M E V H I A L R M and A T U S are acting just fine. So hopefully these will do the same. We're gonna get to start off with S E C O. S E C O is Can Slim Quality is a recent initial public offering and was also in my price volume bop surge scan. Very, very nice technical pattern here. Huge candle reversal the day before on huge volume with max green bop on, on Friday session, a nice intraday bullish hammer candle pattern right off the day before's lows above average volume and it held max green bop. Now this one is a blockchain play it's blockchain news related, hence the huge volume, but there's strong support right here. So since Seco is extended from the 20-day moving average, I do not want to chase this stock. So I'm only going to get long a limit order at 1074. My first cut loss level is going to be 1002, the low just below that big intraday reversal on Thursday. Then you, as the next cut loss level, there's a few options. You can either just use that one at 10.02, which is what I recommend all new traders do if you decide to play Seco. And then next at most, 9.06. Now me, I can't get a full position. Very small position overall. Didn't raise a whole lot of cash on Friday. So I'm actually going to do 10.02 in full disclosure to everyone. 9.06. 858 it's first and then 799 which should be that low right there nope that's 858 okay and then 799 where the hell did i come up with that one at there it is so that's how i think i'm gonna do it we'll see i i might just have four here 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 i'm not quite sure i can't get a very large position i'm getting about 0.5 percent of my account capital placed into this because i'm maxed out this is technically 2% for being can slim, but kind of just 1% because it's a low price stock. So 1% for can slim, 1% for IPO, 1% for price volume bop, slash it in half since it's extended. 1.5% capital is the max that I would put into this one position on its own. But like I said, 0 0.5 is all I can do. And that's all I can do in our next and only other long signal PRMW. PRMW is semi can slim quality and was also in my price volume bop surge scam. Heavier bop than the day before, heavier above average volume than the session before, candle over candle. Seco had a nice hammer candle, as you can see right there. PRMW had a nice ha hammer candle. They both had above average volume. They both had that bop surge. That's why these two were new long positions. They're the only two stocks that displayed these characteristics. Pocket pivot point signal to go with PRMW. But once again, PRMW is slightly extended. If you look here you will see that the five day moving average is below the the real body of the price bar on friday so because it's outside of the real body it's technically extended even though the 20 and 10 and 5 are all touching price the mere fact that they're all on the wick and none are inside the body means that it's short term slightly extended and as you can see that is the case of being up two percent in one day with that big intraday wick and the open actually coming at 1284 which is one penny above the thursday close so very bullish day overall but still slightly extended which is why limit order 1310 my first cut loss level is 1244 
So a move below this low right. Well, who knows? Where is it? There. 1244. You know, I must be looking at stock charts. This must be dividend adjusted from what I have. But bottom line is go check stockcharts.com to get the proper lows. It looks like that this has got the dividend not adjusted into it following Friday session. This is the first cut loss level for me. This is the second cut loss level. This is the third cut loss level. And then this is the fourth cut loss level. 1176. Okay, so that one's right. So 1176 is right. 1195 is right. 1244. Is that where it's missing? Eh, who knows? So ignore all that. Go look at your own charts. I don't know why my numbers on my paper are different than the numbers I'm looking at, but these two are true. But this low right here, second cut loss level, this low right here is the very first one. Limit order at 1310. Okay, so those are the two new long positions. PRMW, 1310. SECO, 1074. All I can do is 0.5% of my remaining capital into each of those. So let's go ahead and now move on to the sell signals. Now, what we're going to probably start seeing more of if this market keeps moving higher each and every day is what I'm about to go through. These are all 20% profit-taking sell signals on stocks and uptrends. Now, it's not shown on this chart. Do I even have an RSI? Let me just click, quickly run through everything. I don't have an RSI 14 anywhere I can pull up. I don't even re I, I don't even rely on telecharts technical data. That's why I really only use their only uh, proprietary indicator, balance of power. I can't really trust the numbers that I see sometimes on telecharts indicators. Maybe the version 17 is better, but I like the older version because I can't match BOP with the price chart on version 17. What the hell? Why is that so difficult? I don't know. Anyways, WTTR, following its move on Friday, triggered an extremely overbought RSI 14 profit-taking signal. When a stock's RSI 14, after not being overbought on the initial long signal, gets above 80, 85, 90, 95, each level is a 20% profit-taking signal. WTTR, following Friday session, eclipsed 80. It's now a 20% profit-taking signal, moving my closest trailing profit stop to just below that low. So 20% WT. TR. SPR is making another 20% profit-taking signal. This is what an arithmetic weekly chart looks like on SPR. It's getting a bit out of hand. But the following Friday session, it is triggering a 20% profit-taking RSI 14 extremely overbought signal. So I'll be selling 20% at the open on Tuesday. My first trailing profit stop now moves up to this low a day right here. Boeing is triggering another 20% profit-taking signal. I'm trailing now my closest profit stop to this low a day right here. This is the next one. This is the next one on Boeing. But I'm selling 20% of what I have left at the market at the open on Tuesday. Also, TTF. This is not a chart you should pay attention to. Go to stockcharts.com. Once again, telechart does not change the stock price for dividends. Uh, they say it's to keep the price integrity, whatever. It makes it impossible to rely on their charts, hence PICO. Look at that thing right there. Trust me, didn't gap down on that kind of volume. That's a dividend adjustment, so keep that in mind. But RWL, that's a 20% profit-taking signal. ROBO, that's a 20% profit-taking signal. EWU, that's a 20% profit-taking signal. Now, with all those out of the way, what triggered 100% sell signals quality side? CNCE. This one's clear-cut. CNCE crashed through multiple key support levels, including the 50-day moving average on extremely heavy volume, max red bot. This is an automatic 100% sell signal, even though we still have gains from our initial entry price action like this, I'm out. Now, me, I raised all of my trailing profit stops to right here. So this low day right here was my final stop, 2010. So you can see intraday on Friday, it eclipsed it, knocking me completely out of CNCE. If I had any left, it goes to right below here, 1881. The stock hits 1880. If I had any CNCE left, I'm all out. 
on an end-of-day basis, it's a 100% sell signal for a 21% gain. The only other quality 100% sell signal, DAIO. Following this session, moved half of my stops here, still had half here. Following this session, I decided to move all of my stops to this low a day as it looked better, figured it should have bounced immediately. The next day, I was knocked out of all of my DAIO. Now, it initially started to bounce, and I was having seller's regret, thinking that, oh, man, maybe I should have kept it here. But either way, when it would have started to bounce like this, maintaining that red bop, my final cut loss, if it was here, would have been moved to here, and I would have been knocked out here anyway before today's price action. As it is, I'm already out of DAIO, but the full sell signal is this. High, low. Lower high, lower low. Lower high, a third lower high, third lower low. A series of three lower highs and lower lows whenever the volume's heavier, and it actually looks like it is above average, is always a 100% sell signal no matter the previous gain. And what my initial entry on DAIO is there. So on an end-of-day basis, we are leaving DAIO with a 29% gain. And since it ended in a profit, I'll go and show you the only 50% sell signal was in a speculative quality stock. You can see I went long SEII when it was CLNT back here. Following Friday session, it is a 50% sell signal. Why? Pretty clear cut. Closing below the 20-day moving average on above average volume and also losing green bop and bop going negative. That's always automatic. So what I have left, moving half of it to this low right here, and then what I have left is being split up currently between this low, this low, and this low. One, two, three stops on the last half of the position, half of my remaining stops at this low. All right, everyone, I will see you in the chat room Tuesday morning. Futures are up, but it's way early. I'm making this video on Sunday. There's still a lot of time left before that market opens on Tuesday. But right as of right now, we're looking good. All right, everyone, aloha.